An American submarine and the Russians in a high-tension scenario that teeters on the brink of war. Hmm, this kind of sounds familiar. Gerard Butler stars in Hunter Killer from director Donovan Marsh. Now, Butler plays a sub-captain who is tasked with rescuing the Russian president who is being held captive during a coup. And all the while, he's trying to avoid starting World War III. The tension between the US and Russia seems a bit dated in this. Like, it feels really Cold War. Now, I don't know, maybe there actually is some tension going on in politics today, but really was, as I watched this film, I just, all I think of is Cold War era. The story's a bit off in places, especially in the periphery. Now, the main story that focuses on the submarine and what they're doing, that that's okay, it's not too bad. But then you have all of these other things that just kind of seem like filler, and you're just, I, I don't even know if they're necessary as they're going on, and they're, they're almost distracting. Now, the pacing does drag a little bit in this film, too, because there are just parts where it just, Ah, gosh, I just, I think you just needed to cut them out or shorten them up to move it along. Unfortunately, Gary Oldman, Common, and Linda Cardellini are wasted in this film. And I'm not talking about tossing back a few wasted. They're just, their performances are just, eh, they're just there. I mean, the characters are not pivotal really to the central story and they could have been played by anybody. And really, even when you consider that, they could have been cut out and the story still would have moved along just fine. We, we get what's going on. We get the premise of it. I don't need these other things going on in the background. And it just seemed a waste for these actors to, to put in this time where they were just kind of like, eh, it's okay. There are also at least two storylines that were kind of referenced throughout the film and then never resolved. I guess, you know, they expected the audience to just kind of forget about it and go along with it. Okay, I did. No, I didn't. I was still wondering, what about this and what about this? I mean, you, you brought it up. I'm intrigued a little bit, so how about you finish telling me? Most of the CGI is pretty bad and obvious. And that's, that's not good, especially in today where we have really good CGI. And then you com combine that with how much the movie reminded me of The Hunt for Red October. Now, those scenes, those action scenes were so well filmed. And if they were real, they were awesome. And if they weren't, they seemed real. And that was from 1990. And speaking of resemblance to The Hunt for Red October, there is so much so that at the beginning of Hunter Killer, there is a character who is a black sonar operator, just like in Hunt for Red October. The only difference is in Hunter Killer, we didn't get that just deep baritone voice of Courtney B. Vance that was awesome. Now I've complained a lot about the film or told you a whole lot of negatives on it, but the film wasn't all terrible. I mean, when the action starts to build in the third act, there begins to be a lot of tension. Even though the outcome is pretty predictable, I still was like, you know, feeling it. And I, I was excited at the third act and as it built and built and built, and then it just kind of ended. And I was like, eh, okay, yeah, I saw it coming. So yay. Overall, Hunter Killer is just okay. Now it could be a crowd pleaser though, because as I was leaving my screening, there were a ton of people that were like, oh my gosh, that was so good. I loved it. And I don't know, maybe they're not critically thinking about it or maybe they're easily entertained or they just enjoyed a free movie. I don't really know, but it just, it, it was missing a lot for me and there were just a whole lot of negatives or things that it was just missing the mark on where I was like, ah, yes, that was a great movie, even though I wanted it to be a great movie. Now, nothing stands out as really awesome in Hunter Killer, but on the other hand, nothing stands out as terribly horrendous either. It's just kind of a wasted potential of a movie. I would love to be able to recommend Hunter Killer, but unfortunately, I can't. There's no sex or nudity, there is some profanity and a fair amount of violence. I give Hunter Killer two and a half out of five couches. What is your favorite seagoing movie? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.